morning everyone. It's boxing day today. So I just thought I'd try and get a little bit of painting done. Uh, I've got quite a few of my mates coming down over the new year period. I was aiming to try and get this possibly somewhat working for them. Not sure we're quite going to make that. Uh, still got quite a bit to do. Uh, but I figure I could just do it getting some paint on so that at least the paint is dry and I can put it back together uh, between now and then. And to be fair, once they're down, we've got a bit of extra manpower then to lift all this back into position because it's starting to get pretty heavy in places. Sadly, being Christmas, everywhere's closed and I've run out of blue paint. So this has only got a really, really light coating of blue. But I've tried to put it on heavy in all the places that you won't be able to get to once it's assembled. But the thought being then that after Christmas, when I can get, when I can get a bit more paint, we can then repaint all of the rest of it that you can see with a decent application of paint. Um, all, the, all the framework, uh, walking floor and everything, I'm just painting black, um, painting that by hand with a brush, just because it's on the floor and obviously trying to spray that against the floor would take hours of masking things up and it really makes no difference at all. All of this is gonna get walked on, strapped to, and it's inevitably gonna end up getting damaged anyway. So a few brush strokes here and there really are not gonna matter. So today's aim is just to get all of this stuff painted at least one coat in black, all the framework in one coat in black. I've got all the panels and stuff which I've covered in primer a couple of days ago and just stuck a quick light coat of blue on again. I've run out of blue now, so I can't paint anything else blue. Um, I've got a little bit of blue in a pot, which I'll probably use just to do. This is all the cover plates and stuff from on the top of the walking floor and the ramps up to the rollers. So I'll probably just paint that by hand again because that's going to be getting driven over constantly. So from my experience on the old one, the paint doesn't last very long on those bits anyway. It'd be nice just to get it all painted at the start and then obviously it'll wear in from there where, you, where your tyres and stuff run. So I guess uh, we'll get the paintbrush out and start painting here. Right, so we've got a splash of paint over all of that now. Like I said, I just hand painted all of the black. Um, it's all gonna be getting driven on and walked on anyway, so it really doesn't matter what it looks like. Really just to stop it going rusty. Um, I have put a very thin bit of paint on the sides, but obviously they're gonna be mashing together. Uh, so I probably will end up spraying some grease or some silicon grease or something on that, just to aid that. And obviously most of that paint will get scratched off. Uh, I've got the back bed painted, all the flame on the floor painted. Yeah, it's going to put this back in position now. Uh, before we do that though, I have just run the thunderbolts in the floor along the back edge of this front bed because obviously once we put that floor down, I won't be able to get at that. So I did also do the front ones while I'm at it. So that front dyno is completely bolted to the floor now. I've got a couple of anchor plates still to make up at the back, which will then do the same along the back, which will then anchor the whole frame to the floor. So everything's nice and solid. Not that it's going to go anywhere anyway because it's so heavy but it's just good to know that that can't move. And then when the cars are strapped to the floor, you know, it's all tied together. So next job is to get these laid back down and bolted in. So I got someone to give me a hand to lift these floor plates back down again, because they're pretty heavy and like super awkward to deal with. So they're all bolted in both sides now. I've just got a couple of bolts each end in the center, just holding everything in position. Uh, so basically now I just need to go around, put all the bolts back in all the covers, put all the covers on this dyno bolt back down, probably then slide it forward a bit so I can paint the back of the frame. I've got some tabs to weld on the back here, or whether I just drill some holes in these uh, roller plates, I'm not quite sure yet, just so I can get all this painted up. I have a bit of a sweep up here. And then hopefully, physically, in terms of all the steel work and everything, other than the ramps, we are hopefully then all together.
Well, I've got all the covers bolted on now. Obviously, I haven't bolted the lids on because I've still got wiring and plumbing and everything to do in that end. But everything this side of that is bolted on, hopefully for the last time. Got the two support plates across the middle bolted in. That basically supports the far end of these uh, walking, walking floor bars when they're obviously not in the center position. Just takes the weight then on top of the original ones, which are then supported from the center. Uh, next job, I see I've already put the pipes underneath. Can get the two rams mounted, so we're almost in the maximum wheelbase position now, bar a few centimeters. These are some second-hand rams I managed to acquire, which were almost perfect for what I need. So that was some good luck. So we're going to get those mounted that end, and I'll just use some air to basically lengthen them manually to get them to line up with the holes. And then obviously once we're all finished, I can pull it in and out on the hydraulics, but moving it now is quite tricky. I can push it in by putting a port power between the back bar there and the back dyno, but pushing it the other way is a little bit awkward to get into. Once I get them in here, we can put the pin through. Mechanically, it's almost all together then. Right, so you see I just pushed that out using the air. Got to be a little bit careful with air with rams because it's not like liquid, obviously you can compress it. So you've got to be a little bit careful that you don't build too much pressure and then you'll, you'll suddenly shoot off somewhere. Um, so I've got that all lined up, got the pin in. Clip those pipes back, they just run then underneath. They'll then tee into the ram on the other side, which I'm now about to mount. And then go up to the valve block on the hydraulic pump. Just in the end, I just put some clips either side of the ram this end. It's going to make a, like a boltable bracket, but I figured it's a little bit overkill. It's literally just there to push the dyno forward and back and then hold it obviously in rigid position when it's being used. Right, that's all mounted now. See, I've got that plumbed in, like I said, as I worked out which pipe was going over to the same on the other side. And just teed them in the bottom there. So I just got a couple of P-clips there to keep those hoses up off the ground. So that's pretty much the hydraulic side of it complete. Obviously, we just got two, two solenoids on there, which will be connected in the control box when I get around to wiring, but pretty much leaving that till last. We've got two rams mounted, hydraulic pumps mounted, control box is just mounted, obviously there's nothing in there yet. Um, and I've got a screen mounted up there, probably got another one to go up above that. And obviously the ramps. But she is actually starting to look like a dyno again, big time. So this is pretty cool.